Okay, so for the past four months, I have been recording all of my audio in 32-bit float. And so if you are a content creator looking to change their workflow to a 32-bit float recording workflow, um, here are some practical things that you probably should know. Before we jump into it, let me tell you what the 32-bit float recording devices that I've been using over the last four months for a variety of different applications. For recordings where I have a specific microphone in the field that I wanna use, I've been using the Zoom F3. For quick recordings, both mono and stereo, I have been using my Zoom M3. If I'm doing vlogs and shooting outside, I've been using my Instamic Pro Plus. And because I do professional voice work in my everyday workflow, uh, I've been using the new Zoom UAC232 audio interface, recording 32-bit float into Adobe Audition. And uh, I'm using that right now, so obviously I can't, uh, I can't hold that thing up. So as a content creator, what are the most important things that you need to know about incorporating 32-bit float recordings into your workflow? Well, first up, it, uh, it simplifies the recording process. On all of these devices, I pretty much just simply hit record and uh, worry about all of that stuff later. So there's really little prep time you need to do beforehand. There's no setting levels. There's no like monitoring any audio. So if you are a solo content creator, it can be super helpful and allowing you to focus on a myriad of any other things like lighting, your camera, you know, your wardrobe. But because of this set it and forget it kind of recording mentality, with 32-bit float recordings, um, most likely you will need to edit them in post. Now that could be as simple as adjusting levels, adding a little bit of compression, normalizing to what you want your final audio loudness to be. But because of the nature of how this workflow is, it's not like you have a recording, dump it into your video editor, and, uh, and you're all set. I would say that in 90% of the audio recordings I've done in 32-bit float, I have had to add some kind of editing or post-processing. And that brings us to the next thing that you as a solo content creator need to know about using 32-bit float recordings in your workflow. And that is you will need to sync your audio in post. So at the time that I'm making this video, there are only a handful of audio devices that output 32-bit float formats. And to my knowledge, there are zero cameras that record their audio in 32-bit float, which means that in post, you will have to take your recorded audio and sync it to your video. So in my case, what I end up doing is recording a scratch track on my camera, sometimes using an external microphone, sometimes using the built-in mic to my camera. And I use that as a reference to sync my audio via waveform in my editing software, which in my case is DaVinci Resolve. Now this might seem like a huge barrier, but the way that a lot of editing software is these days, you can auto sync these by waveform in post. So it makes it like a two click process. And if you have a strong recording on your scratch track, it makes it all that much more accurate. So until audio devices uniformly output 32 bit float file formats and cameras start to use things like USB-C inputs for their audio and allow 32-bit float recording. Yeah, we're gonna have to probably sync for, I don't know, six months, a year, two years, forever. But let me make a wild prediction and say that eventually things will shift to 32-bit float recording, but the onus will be on the audio components to have those capabilities, the dual analog to digital converters that are needed for that dynamic range and cameras will just be a container that record in 32-bit float. Now, in all of my experience with 32-bit float recording uh, in a variety of different scenarios, I will say that you do need to know you do not need 32-bit float recordings to get clean audio. In fact, there is probably uh, an imperceptible sound difference between a 32-bit float recording and a 24-bit recording that has a proper gain setting. There's no jump in audio quality. You won't be, be able to hear any difference. But what it does do is allow you to take all of that work while you're in your shoot to set levels and shift that in your workflow to post. But you will not hear any kind of perceivable difference in audio quality. And speaking of that, 32-bit float is not a magic solution for recovering any and all audio. You can still easily ruin your audio even if you are recording in 32-bit float, and that holds true for any of these devices. 
because while their digital components allow for a much wider dynamic range, there's a bottleneck with their analog components. So a great example of this is you will still be susceptible to things like plosives and wind noise because things like that distort your signal at the microphone and then that just gets recorded into your 32-bit float recording. So know that you still have to practice things like good mic technique, wind protection, and understand the limitations of some of these devices that they are not foolproof. So should you switch to 32-bit float recording? I mean, who is it really for? In my opinion, 32-bit float recordings really benefit the solo content creator. The person who is going out in the field, who is trying to record something and only has one opportunity to do that and needs to guarantee that they are going to get a clean recording. So say, for example, if you um, shoot events like weddings or uh, speakers or interviews and you don't have the opportunity to redo something like the wedding vows. Recording in 32-bit allows you to be able to guarantee that you don't clip your audio if someone starts shouting or speaks at a different volume. You know, you could have something like an officiant mic'd up and during the most intimate part of a wedding, they are speaking really softly. And then towards the end, when they're ready to announce the bride and groom, they are super, super loud, right? And 32-bit float recordings will allow you to capture that dynamic range without having to worry about clipping. But they are also great in situations like recording live music, where you don't know exactly how loud things are going to get, and you kind of want to enjoy the live music in the moment. So having a 32-bit float audio recorder or microphone set up where you can just hit record and capture, the, capture that audio uh, is a lifesaver. But then again, be mindful that things like that do require good mic technique. So if you are standing in the middle of a, of a crowd and you start your 32-bit float recording and the person next to you is screaming or singing along at the top of their lungs, most likely that is what your audio recording is going to pick up. Why? Because they're just closer to your microphone. I mean, that's just the way it works. With regards to using 32-bit float in a studio setting, like I do for voiceover uh, just about every day, it's really beneficial if you are a solo person who is both the audio engineer and the talent, and you don't have the ability to adjust any levels while you are performing. Or if you do a lot of character work where there is a lot of quiet, intimate moments, and then you are shouting really, really loudly, yeah, then you don't have to worry about those because in post, you are able to take all of that and reduce those levels so they're not clipping. But who is 32-bit float recording not for? Uh, that one's just a little different to answer because there are lots of applications where it just doesn't make sense. So if you are not an audio savvy person and you don't like to work with your audio file separately in post, then yeah, stick to the file format that your camera records in, most likely 16-bit or 24-bit. And having a good understanding of how to set those levels properly will still give you a super clean recording. 32-bit float will also not help you if you are a streamer or do a lot of live streaming. And that's because, like I said, it is more of a post-process workflow and not something that is active on the fly. Meaning that when you live stream, you are still constrained to the uh, bit depth of the platform that you're streaming on. But if you are the kind of content creator who makes gaming content or you have a reaction channel, uh, yeah, 32-bit float will totally help you in your fully produced content because it will allow you to speak at a normal level and, oh, <laughs> totally get scared, totally get excited, totally get upset, shout into your microphone and not blow out the eardrums of your viewers. So ultimately, should you specifically switch to a 32-bit float workflow? Well, uh, that depends on all of these factors. You kind of have to determine for yourself. But hopefully you have some additional knowledge going into it to see how that might benefit or detract from your actual workflow. If you have any questions, drop them down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk again real soon.